AGS, alpha gal syndrome, or alpha gal allergy, it's sometimes called, or tick bite meat allergy, even red meat allergy. Have you ever heard of this? Write in the comments if you have. By the way, not a lot of doctors have heard about this. In 2022, 42% of surveyed healthcare providers still hadn't heard of alpha-gal syndrome. So that's why we're talking about this because you actually may need to educate your doctor. All right, we're gonna call it alpha-gal syndrome for the remainder of this video. And I'm gonna tell you what it is, why it happens, you know, what the deal is with ticks, why they are involved, what the symptoms are, what the treatment is, diagnosis, everything, okay? Mostly everything. Uh, guys, I'm Dr. Jen, it's good to see you. Welcome back. So alpha-gal syndrome is a serious, potentially life-threatening allergy to the carbohydrate molecule called galactose alpha-1,3 galactose. Galactose alpha-1,3 galactose. So we call it alpha-gal for short. That's where this come from, comes from rather. So the thing about this alpha-gal, which again is short for galactose alpha-1,3 galactose, this alpha-gal is a carbohydrate that is found in most mammals. So when we say mammals, what are we talking about? We're talking about cows, pigs, and sheep, goat, deer, other game animals such as rabbit, squirrel, elk, bear, boar. Um, it's not found in humans, keep that in mind, okay? So we know that alpha-gal is a carbohydrate found in many mammals, of the ones I just mentioned, but specifically it can be found in mammalian meat, okay? So it's often referred to as red meat. So this includes like beef, pork, mutton, lamb, venison, and rabbit. The CDC includes rabbit in there. It can also be found in animal milk or dairy products, gelatin, and other products made from mammals. So that's super important. Make sure you log that in your brain, okay? So now let's go back to alpha-gal syndrome. Alpha-gal syndrome, remember, is an allergy to alpha-gal, this carbohydrate found in mammals. And it can exist as, number one, a food allergy, meaning some people are allergic to red meat, right? Uh, they have allergies to beef or pork or blah, 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 blah. They may also have an allergy to animal milk, dairy products, gelatin, and other products made from mammals. Um, also, people with alpha-gal syndrome or the allergy may also have potential drug allergies as well because alpha-gal is actually found in some medications and vaccines, okay? But you should keep in mind that everybody with the alpha-gal syndrome doesn't necessarily react to medication ingredients. So I know this is probably blowing your mind because it blew my mind when I learned about it. This is why you need to learn about it. So it's an allergy. So what are the symptoms we think about when we think about allergies? We think about hives, okay? Those sort of weppy bumps all over the body, itchy rash. You can get a severe allergic reaction, which can cause a whole body reaction, nausea, vomiting, uh, stomach pain, diarrhea. You can get shortness of breath, cough, drop in blood pressure, swelling of the lips, tongue, etc. We're thinking like anaphylaxis, that can happen too. Dizziness, faintness. Um, anaphylaxis, right? So there can be a spectrum. And again, this is an allergy due to this alpha-gal substance that people have an allergy to. So let me explain to you why this happens and what's going on. And this, by the way, is where the ticks come in. So what can happen is a lone star tick can have saliva that contains this alpha-gal carbohydrate, okay? What then happens is, you know, when a tick that has this alpha-gal in its saliva actually bites a person, it introduces this alpha-gal carbohydrate into the person's body. Then the person, let's say that's me, their immune system identifies this alpha-gal as something foreign and initiates an allergic immune response. What I think is really interesting though, is that for many people, this tick bite uh, actually occurs weeks to months before the onset of alpha-gal syndrome symptoms even happen. So anyway, the person had, the, had this sort of immune response and had the bite. Then later on, when the person consumes red meat, beef, pork, lamb, etc., this triggers an allergic reaction due to the antibodies that were produced at the time that the person got the tick bite. And that is what causes the alpha-gal syndrome reaction. This reaction is really unique among allergic reactions because the allergic reaction doesn't happen right after eating. Um, we think of allergic reactions, and oftentimes an allergy or allergic reaction to something will happen immediately, right? Not this one. This one actually takes two to six hours after eating to occur. The reason why is because it has to do with food. And so your body has to kind of digest that food, etc., and it takes a little time. So the reaction happens later than other typical allergic reactions. So interesting, right? Now, not all bites from Lone Star ticks result in people developing alpha-gal syndrome, okay? 
there's a lot of stuff that we don't know. We don't know why um, some people who are bitten by ticks develop alpha-gal syndrome and some do not. We don't fully know the role of other tick species and their ability to cause alpha-gal syndrome in the United States, but we do know that other ticks can cause it throughout the world, okay? So you say, well, how would I know if I have this? Um, and this is for doctors too. There are a few things that should sort of tip us off that maybe this could be going on. Um, if somebody wakes up in the middle of the night with allergic symptoms, okay, why that? Well, because remember I told you that it can take two to six hours after eating to develop the allergic reaction. If you're eating a burger and fries for dinner or whatever, you could absolutely be asleep when that happens. And that's not common for say other allergic reactions when you're up and doing something and you know you've been exposed and then voila, the allergic reaction happens. When you're asleep, you ain't been doing nothing, right? So, you know, being awakened with an allergic reaction really should clue us in, like, could this be going on? Also, if you have an anaphylaxis reaction with an unknown cause or an adult onset allergy, um, recurrent unexplained allergic reactions that we can't really clearly link to other allergens. And if you have allergic symptoms and you report a recent tick bite, okay? So diagnosis, please understand that there are there's blood work that we can do to take a look at this. Also, of course, the history and physical that your doctor takes is gonna be very important. It will be very important for you to make sure you're keeping track of your symptoms, the exposures, what's going on in your life. Were you recently exposed to ticks? Were you hiking? Were you, you know, just all that kind of stuff really, really matters to us. And just understanding that in terms of treatment, the main safety of treatment is really avoiding the, the trigger, okay? And it is that for so many allergies, right? So, you know, when we find out that this is going on, eliminating red meat from your diet, potentially uh, eliminating dairy or certain medication ingredients might be required as well. Uh, making sure that you have an EpiPen on, on hand. And then also, of course, we can't forget the obvious, avoiding tick bites, right? You want to protect yourself from tick bites because remember, they can carry not only diseases, but molecules that can trigger an allergic reaction, right? By the way, this is not an infectious disease. I should be very clear about that. This is an allergy that's um, brought on by a tick bite. Uh, your body's response to what's in the saliva of a tick and it has a, an allergic response and, and that's what's happening, not an infection but it still brings us to the point where you gotta protect yourself against ticks. You don't want tick bites. I have a whole video on how to protect yourself against tick bites. Make sure you uh, click that. I'll try to link that here if you're watching on YouTube. I would also say our friends, allergists and immunologists are so, so, so important. I mean, look, if I have any, any, any question about allergies or allergic stuff for my patients, uh, we can't figure out what's going on, just anything. You, you gotta see an allergist. They are experts in this. They're the ones who do this um, like the pros that they are. So don't hesitate to see an allergist. Uh, treatments include how we treat allergies. So it can be an EpiPen, antihistamine, steroids, uh, Benadryl, bronchodilator, I mean, you name it. Um, this video is not to tell you how to treat it. No, 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 no. I can't tell you how to do that. Only your doctor can. You gotta see your doctor, okay? You gotta seek medical care if you're having anaphylaxis, but just please keep in mind your symptoms, your exposures, et cetera, because this alpha-gal syndrome is not always something that's recognized by patients and or doctors, and I want you to know about it. Let me know in the comments if you know about this, if you've had it, anything like that. I'm Dr. Jen Carl. Please subscribe to my channel. Click the little bell for updates. I do daily videos on everything. Please like and follow my page. Love y'all. Okay.